looking at government intervention when there is a market imperfection, a market failure, if you will. So the three goals. First is to lay out what we mean by economic inefficiencies when there's a market failure. In this particular instance on the production side, we're going to apply this in an import competing sector and we're going to look at potential responses of the government to this market failure. One, a trade intervention, in particular a tariff, and the other is a domestic intervention, which is a production subsidy. This is in the instance of a positive production externality. So what do we mean by an externality? That's a cost or a benefit imposed on a member of society by someone else that's not taken into account by market signals. So on a production, positive production uh, externality is when society gets some benefits. When, a, when an industry produces more that's, that the individual firm does not take into account. So for example, clean energy might have benefits to society in terms of reducing greenhouse gases, which a, an individual producer may not take into account. They're going to look at only their own production costs, not the societal benefits. A negative consumption, uh, production externality is just the opposite. For example, the classic uh, instance is when there is pollution created through the production of a process. Toxic waste into a river, hurts the farmers down the, downstream, and unless there's a government intervention, the firm will not take that societal cost into account. So let's first analyze a positive production externality. So we have the marginal cost curve for the private firm, given by the, the black line, and a social marginal cost curve given by the red line. So what do we mean by this? Let's imagine that the private marginal cost of the first unit is given by the height of that uh, black line. So this is from a producer's standpoint. They take a look at their costs. They take a look at their bottom line, and they say, this is the marginal cost of producing this unit. From society's standpoint, that marginal cost is less because there are benefits that the private producer does not take into account. So the, the, the vertical distance between these two lines is the positive production externality. For simplicity, we're assuming a constant positive externality so that these two lines are, are parallel. So how does this uh, affect uh, decisions by, by the individuals? Let's imagine there's a, a simple price of P1. From the producer standpoint, they price for marginal cost equal to the price. They produce 10 units. That's uh, their decision. From society's standpoint, the, where the marginal cost to society equals the price is where the optimal production would be. So domestic producers produce too little. 15 is the social optimum where the, the price equal to marginal cost. 10 units is where price equal to private marginal costs. So let's take a look at that in a little bit more detail. From a, in, in particular, to look at the, the difference in cost between 10 and 15 units. Private firms view that extra five units as costing the area under the domestic marginal cost curve, BFL. That's the cost that they perceive. They only get revenue equal to FL, that's price, P1, times the quantity, 5. So from, a, or from the private firm standpoint, it's not worth it to produce beyond 10 units. Society views this increase in production costing only L, under the area underneath the social cost curve. So from the society's standpoint, there's a free market inefficiency equal to F. Those are the it's revenue that the firms could get in excess of what it costs society 
to actually produce that amount. So let's take this into the import competing sector. So we'll do this with a small country so that the, uh, the world price is given. Initially, we're making decisions based on the private marginal cost curve. Firms make their decisions solely based on their own uh, private considerations. Social cost is a is below what the private cost curve would be. Domestic firms produce Q1. From the standpoint of society, Q3 is the proper amount. And Q2, the difference between Q2 and Q1 are the imports. There is Q3 to Q2 is what the socially optimal level of imports would be. But for that difference between Q1 and Q3, the difference between the optimal production and the actual production, the social cost of importing that amount is FL. That's the world price multiplied times the quantity. The private cost perceived by the firms is the area underneath their supply curve, FBL. So from the private firm standpoint, they're not going to produce the, that amount. The social cost is L, so that's very similar to the example that we just gave. So from the standpoint of society, there's too little domestic production. Imports are Q2 to Q1. Imports should be Q2 to Q3. But I want to underline that the problem here is too little domestic production. Not that there are too many imports per se, it's that there's too little domestic production. So now we'll take a look at various policies that could generate uh, an increase in domestic production. Now, the initial inefficiencies, similar to the example before, is area F. That is the market inefficiency associated with free trade. And let's first take a look at what the effects of a tariff would be. Now, keep in mind that a tariff will increase the domestic price. That will increase domestic production. So one could increase domestic production by restricting the amount of imports. Original imports, again, Q2 to Q1. If we set a tariff equal to the difference between the private and social cost, we could encourage domestic producers to produce Q3. Price goes up, they're going to be willing to take on that extra production. We could get to Q3 with the properly chosen uh, tariff rate. But the increase in price domestically causes a reduction in consumption. The higher price at PW plus T results in consumption of Q4. That is a response to the market facing restricted imports. So what we have is fewer imports from two sources. One, an increase in domestic production to Q3 and a reduction in consumption to Q4. But keep in mind that there was no problem on the consumption side. It was purely on the, on the domestic production side. So what we have here is the standard cost of consumers priced out of the market, area D. That's the difference between the consumer benefit associated with uh, consuming the difference uh, between Q2 and Q4 and the cost of importing it. So D is the consumer, the consumer effects of those priced out of the market. So from a social standpoint, we have benefits of F, by, of the tariff, increasing domestic production. That's good. But a social cost of consumers priced out of the market. Well, that creates the problem that we don't know for sure that the net social benefits will be positive. If the domestic production 
gains of F are really big relative to the size of the consumer losses, it could be a good, a good plan. If the cost of domestic consumers priced out of the market was very large relative to F, you could actually do worse by intervening than by doing nothing. Now recall, even if that's the case, even if area D is greater than area F, you will increase domestic production. You will have met one of your goals associated with the intervention, but it comes at potentially too high a cost. Alternatively, you could intervene directly through a production subsidy. Now, this production subsidy could lower the cost of private marginal cost directly. That production subsidy could be equal in principle to the difference between the marginal cost perceived by the private firms and the marginal social cost. And that would essentially shift the supply curve to the right, lining up domestic marginal cost with the social marginal cost. And if that were done, if you could line up the social cost and the private cost, then you would go from original imports of Q2 to Q1 to an increase in domestic production to Q3, and indeed you'll have fewer imports, but only because of an increase in domestic production, not because of an, a decrease in consumption associated with the higher prices. So what we have here is the benefits of increased production without the cost to consumers. This would clearly be better. We get the same level of production as the tariff without the downside of consumers priced out of the market. So this production subsidy could be socially optimal, but should note that the production subsidy is going to cost the government some money. They've got to raise those funds from domestic sources if we consider transfers between domestic taxpayers to the government, to producers as having no effect on welfare, which is the assumption we've been making throughout the course, then those transfers don't affect national welfare. They certainly could be uh, controversial politically, but don't affect national welfare. Now, applying both of these policies in practice is no trivial matter. Knowing the level of the market externality, the, mark, the positive production externality, is non-trivial. You, you can't pick up the Wall Street Journal and find that. You have to estimate it, and that is inherently a, a difficult proposition. You also have the cost of, of administering the, the production subsidy. There would, would need to be a, uh, bureaucrats to assess this, to uh, have, make sure that uh, this is done in a proper fashion, and so that can be uh, something that, that one would need to take into account as well, as well. So it's hard to get the optimal level of, of intervention, but one thing is clear. For a domestic intervention, the domestic production subsidy is going to be better than the trade intervention because you don't have the, the cost to consumers. A negative production externality is just the opposite. We've got a higher social marginal cost than private perceived costs. So the private marginal cost of the first unit, the height of that black line, the marginal social cost of the first unit is higher. So this would be an example, say, of, a, uh, of pollution. So similar to what we had before, optimal price is P1. Domestic producers will decide to produce at 10, where price equal marginal cost. Five units is actually the optimal amount, where the price equal to social marginal cost. If we take a look at this in more detail, the private cost of production, the total variable cost of producing fi uh, those five units, the difference between 10 and 5, is the area under the supply curve, that's area K. Firms get revenue from that amount of production of HK, so price times quantity. But from society's standpoint, the cost of producing that is the area under that social marginal cost 
social cost of uh, production of, of LHK. So what you have here is a market inefficiency with no government intervention. In particular, the free market intervention with the negative production externality is area L. Now, although we won't do this now, it would be useful to take a look at the negative production externality story in a small country that's where the industry is competing with imports and consider the two these two policies. One, a tariff will raise the domestic price. That will dis, uh, discourage domestic production, which we want it to have, but it also has those effects on consumers. Same story. You've got to take a look at the, the net effects. The production tax will, de will increase the marginal cost of producers, domestic producers, and can lower their production through the direct intervention without increasing the cost of consumers because there would be free access to the international market. Domestic producers couldn't pass along those costs. So, to sum up, when you have externalities in domestic production, the optimal policy is to address the problem directly. Even, broadly speaking, when there's a market externality, addressing the problem most directly is the best way to go. An indirect policy, as is often the case with trade policy, when, with a domestic production externality, leads to negative side effects, unintended consequences, increasing the cost to consumers, for example. That can make things worse off than doing nothing. So if, even if there is a, an, an externality identified, the government just doing something that may have these unintended consequences can actually be worse than simply letting the market react. Carefully crafted, policies that directly affect the underlying problem can be socially optimal.